Man, I am so sick and tired of the same old bullshit. I'm done. I'm, I'm tired of it. I, I don't even know what to say anymore. West Virginia loses to Kansas. We lost to Kansas. Neil Brown has to go. I'm, you know, I've been supporting him. I've been on the Neil Brown train ever since the, ever since it took off. I've been there. I've been trying to support him and 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 and, and defend him. And even since last week when we lost to Pitt, I'm trying to defend him. Trying to tell him, you know, he's you know he's got it together. You know, he he, he should have yeah he should have gone for fourth down, but you know he's got it together. And you know we we got a talented team, and you know we're a good enough team to win and and maybe go nine and three or eight and four. And then we come out and lay an egg against Kansas. And there was, and I, I didn't get to watch the whole thing. I, I tried to watch it on YouTube, you know, but you know how that is. I mean, they either get copyright strikes or, you know, some Jamoke has to put a goddamn, you know, blocker up in front of the screen so you can't hardly see anything, that type of shit. So, I, you know, I didn't get to see the full, you know, the full, you know, game, whatever. But there were several moments um, that... I think that we should have gone for fourth down where it was like, you know, we, we were driving the damn ball and should have gone for fourth down. And instead we punt the ball away to a, to a offense that's been driving the ball down our, down our throat. And our defense showed no answer and, and, and decided not to show up at all. Didn't even come out of the damn locker room against this damn Kansas team. And it's sad because our defense has been the bright spot. Our defense has been the freaking bright spot for three years. That's the only thing you could say about Neil Brown. Then we get a good offense, and our offense played exceptional, played great, played good enough to win. And what happens? Our defense doesn't show up. It's either one or the other. We have a good offense or a good defense. That's it. And it's, this is going back from the Dana Holgerson days. We would either have um, an amazing offense or... We'd have a terrible defense, you know, no, nothing in between. And, and, and another thing is there were several times it was, I saw a third and nine. It was third and nine early in the, early in the first quarter or no, not the first quarter. This was, uh, later on in the second quarter. Um, and we were driving the ball and this was our first time. This is the first time we punted, right? So. What happened, it was third and nine. And mind you, JT Daniels hasn't, hasn't thrown an incompletion yet thus far. Third and nine. He does a handoff right up the middle. Right up the middle. And we weren't making, we were only getting three yards of carry at this point. You gave up. Just to punt the ball, you 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 played a third down for your for your punter. Like you, you don't do that. You don't. And this is the thing. He'll try to set up his punter. You know, it'll be like fourth and one. He'll purposely take a, a delay of game penalty to give his punter more room to punt the ball, bro. I get it. You, you know, special teams is important. Special teams is important. But you know what? What you know what's more important? Offense! Offense is more important. Alright? I'm not, this isn't no freaking Beamer ball or type bullshit that doesn't work. You got to, you have to want to win the game. You don't go out and, and, and try not to lose. And that's what you're doing by playing to punt. You're playing your first, second, and third down in, in, in an attempt 
to punt on fourth down. You're not even thinking about scoring a touchdown. I'm convinced that Neil Brown, when he sends his offense out on the field, he's like, all right, how can we get our punter lined up where he can down them at the one? That's all he cares about. He, he It's like, bro, if you, know, you, if you score touchdowns, you don't have to worry about setting the punter up. The, you should only punt when you have to. When you absolutely have to. And no, I, I don't mean go for it on fourth down all the time. I mean when your offense is clicking and you have confidence that you can score a touchdown or move the ball down the field if you're on fourth and one and you, and you think that you can you know, move the ball down the field and score a touchdown, that's what you should do. You shouldn't be thinking, oh, well... Maybe we should just punt, you know, not even try to attempt to to score a touchdown. That's kind of what it feels like. He comes out, he doesn't even try to attempt to to want to score a touchdown. Now, Graham Harrell, his his offensive play calling was um exceptional, and I can tell that Neil Brown has dropped off a little bit, but you can still see him come in on those critical situations. So he has his hands. Like for the most part, with the offensive play calling, he 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 lets Graham Harrell do what he wants. But then when it comes down to the the fourth downs, you know, or or the third and nines, he's telling Graham Harrell, okay, we're, let's pl- we're going to play this one conservative. We're going to play this one conservative. And so Har- Graham Harrell has his hands tied behind his back because Neil Brown is telling him, look, we're not going to, uh, you know. We, we, we're going to take it easy and play conservative, right? And, and like, the fourth, the, 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 there was terrible, terrible, um, terrible time um, management in the fourth quarter. Awful. I mean, I, I, I wasn't, at this point, I wasn't able to watch, but from, at least from what I heard, from what other people have told me, and from, um, looking online you know at the scoreboard well it took us like like first off it took us like like five minutes it was like a a freaking it was like six it was like eight minutes on the clock when we got the ball and we took like five minutes off the board just to score a damn uh field goal just to score a field goal. And he played for the field goal, too. <clears throat> we could have scored a touchdown. <coughs> but he was satisfied with a field goal. You know? And that didn't end up hurting us because what it did is it made it an eight-point game. But still, what's, what's that doing is it's making you have to, you know, it's forcing you guys to have to score that two-point conversion. You know, that's that's what it's doing. If you would have scored a touchdown, it would have been 38 and 38 to 42. Then that allows you to your next drive. All you have to do is 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 kick a field goal and it ties it up. Or if you score a touchdown, you don't have forget the two point conversion. You can even miss the extra point. You're still in the lead. But when you sit there and settle for field goals, then it's 34 to 42. Then you're like. The chances of you winning uh, decreases exponentially because then you have to rely on the two-point conversion. <sighs> so it's just the same old bullshit that we see week in and week out. Week in and week out, it's the same shit. I'm tired of the mediocrity of this program. I'm tired of it. We 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 <sighs> we have such a great tradition. Such a great program, great facilities, great atmosphere, great fan base, you know, passion, unique. We have culture. They're the only team in our state. There's so much things to love about West Virginia football. But winning is not one of them. Winning isn't one of them. Who wants to be a West Virginia fan? Who wants to be a West Virginia fan? 
You know how there's bandwagoner fans and, and people hop on to a fan base, whatever? We don't have that because nobody wants to be us. And, and okay, so I'm not saying that Dana Horgerson was a better coach because I don't think he was. Personally, I think we held on to him way too long, and I, I just don't see that he I, – I just – I don't see it in him. You know, he, he did the same bullshit that Neil Brown's doing, just in different ways, all right? The same exact bullshit, it's just he's doing it in different ways, right? But what Dana Horgerson did do is he played to win, all right. Now this kind of sometimes would come back to bite him, you know, because he would play, he would he would he would play so aggressively because he would be confident in his team to win, right? Um, this came back to bite us in the Oklahoma game in 2018 because he kicked an onside kick. If we would have just kicked it off, we who knows we could have stopped Oklahoma, gotten the ball back, and been able to score again, you know. But you know, he kicked the onside kick and we lost the game. Um, you know, he would go for it on fourth down way too much. Uh, he would he would pass the ball way too much and, and, and you know, that would just cause turnovers, whatever. You know, whatever you can say. But what I'm saying is that he still, his aggressive nature showed that he had confidence in his team to win. You know, it showed that he believed in his team and he showed that he was willing to go out and win the game. Quote him, to quote him in the Texas game, let's go out and win this fucking ball game. Let's go out and win this fucking ball game. Do you really think Neil Brown would, would ever have that kind of mentality? I mean, if, if Neil Brown was in that same exact scenario against Texas, we lose that game. We lose that game. And, and, and I don't even think we score that last touchdown at the end. No. No, we drive the ball down the field. Like, his dumbass would probably kick a field goal with a, a less than a minute left just so we can try to do an onside kick and maybe, a, you know, some – leave it by some miracle that we end up scoring at the last second because but Neil Brown would not even he wouldn't even tie the game up after Texas would have scored with two minutes left in that game that would have been it that would have been over over and done with over and done with his ass would be trying to run the ball with like a minute left when we're down by a touchdown you know that type of bullshit like he doesn't he doesn't want to win. He's he, he he's not confident no matter what kind of talent we have on our team, no matter who we have on our team, it doesn't matter who the hell is our quarterback, it doesn't matter who it doesn't matter if we have an NFL team. All right? He he he's not confident in in winning football games. He's just he plays not to lose. He plays not to lose. That's it. He holds on, and I don't get that because you're looking at him at Troy, and he had this confident nature about him. You know, you see him go to LSU, and he's he's confidently, you know, you know, playing to win. You know, going for it on fourth down, taking all these risks. You know, think they might did they kick an onside kick in that game? I think they did, and they got it. Like there was all kinds of little wrinkles that he was doing that he showed the the confidence and and. The, the gut and the pure nature and the want to win at Troy, he showed that. And then he comes to West Virginia, and it's like he's afraid to, to make any – he's afraid to do anything. I mean, I, I, just, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. And I, it's like I don't even know what to say. I'm rambling on because I just – I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. And, you know – We're in a worse situation now than what we were before Neil Brown. Think about that. West Virginia was in a better place in 2018 than we are in 2022. You know, it's kind of like, you know, like 
a, a presidency or whatever. And I'm not even going to, I'm not getting into whichever president or whatever. I'm just saying in general, like people, you know, you look at a president and, you know, after his four years, you look back and you're like, uh, you know, is, was the United States better before him or after him? That type of thing. Well, looking at it from West Virginia, uh, we are, we were significantly better, you know, before Neil Brown than what we are now. I mean, I mean that not necessarily in wins or losses, but our overall appearance of our program was like massively, you know, we were a respected program. Didn't matter that we would lose games here and there, but we, we were respected. I mean, nobody wanted to play us, even if we were a six and six, seven and five team. Now it's not the case. Now, now that's not the case. I mean, people legitimately look at West Virginia like a group of five team because we come in and we just, we lay an egg and we, we, we can't muster up anything. And like we are, we are, we're, to me, we are a talented group of five team. We're a group of five team with three stars and four stars. Well, some four stars. We're a group of five team with three stars and four stars. That's it. That's it. And, you know, I had a question mark about Neil Brown um, last year when he continued to start Jarrett Dagey, even though we all saw how awful, absolutely awful Jarrett Dagey was. He was terrible. I mean, God damn, I've never seen a more awful quarterback at West Virginia than Jarrett Dagey, and I'm being dead serious. I've been watching since I was uh, seven years old when in 2007. I've been watching ever since. Never seen a worse quarterback than Jarrett Dagey. I'm just being plain honest. And yet he continued to start him. And, you know, his excuse was, oh, well, Garrett Green wasn't, wasn't ready and he was too high and low. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I mean, at that point, you don't just settle. You don't just settle for what you got. You got to do something. You got to give somebody else a chance. You don't just continue to, to, to bring somebody out that's, that drops a turd every, you know. And I've kind of, I had experience with this, um, in, you know, in my own playing days when, you know, like even like in my youth football, like playing youth football, I remember, you know, like we would, like they they would have a, the coach's son would be quarterback and he would just be absolutely awful and, you know, they would never take him out and, and that the backup would be exceptional and yet he would never get a chance and they would just settle and they would be like, you know, they would rather lose with the starting quarterback that's terrible than win with the backup quarterback. You know, that type of thing. Uh, Neil Brown rather lose with Jarrett Dagey than win with anybody else. That's just point blank. And the thing is, the reason why is because he was stubborn because Austin Kendall didn't pan out. And then Jarrett Dagey, he had to try to prove that Jarrett Dagey was, was a good quarterback. That's all he was doing, was trying to prove that he didn't mess up twice in a row. He, that's all he was trying to prove is that, you know, because we're looking back and he, he missed on Kendall and then he missed on Jarrett Dagey. Two transfers in the same class that were both misses. Two quarterback transfers in the same class that were both, both misses. And then you got Garrett Green, who came in in 2019, and he wasn't ready in 21. I mean, that's two years of development, and he still wasn't ready to, to even play. You know, that's something that, that should have been a red flag right there, you know? And and then we see, and and I was saying this the whole time that Jared Deggie is awful and Jared Deggie is trash, blah blah blah. And I was kind of a little bit over Neil Brown at the time. I mean, I still supported him and shit, and and you know was willing to get through the season and and maybe hope for something better down the line, which kind of happened. Uh, and I'll get to that, but 
at the time, I'm like, yo, Jarrett Diggy is terrible, blah, blah, blah. And then people are like, you know, saying that Jarrett Diggy's good and blah, blah, blah. He leads the Big 12 in passing yards. I'm like, no, he's awful. He's not good. If you watch his play, watch his performance, he's not a good quarterback. And then guess what happens? We This year comes along. He transfers. He goes to Western Kentucky. Then he loses the starting job at Western Kentucky. And I think they brought him in because they were expecting him to start. And then he lost the starting job there. And he lost the starting job to another transfer that they brought in after him. So they, they took one look at him and they said that he's not it. And they brought in another transfer. You know, instead of trying, and they ate a humble pie by doing so because they realized, yeah, this guy is not panning out. So, you know, but Neil Brown kind of did that with Austin Kendall, realized Austin Kendall wasn't it, and then tried to get Jared Dagey. But once he realized Jared Dagey wasn't it, he should have gotten somebody else, you know, but he, he refused to do so. And he, he he wasted a whole 2021 season. What he what he was like he was just like uh, 2021. It's it's a wash. Let's just you know call it quits for this year and do something different next year. That's really what he did, you know. But back to Daggy, he transferred away from Western Kentucky after losing the starting job. Then he goes to Troy, and then loses the starting job at Troy. Couldn't get on the field at Troy. So this is a quarterback that is that can't get on the field at two group of five schools, but yet started for one and a half seasons, no, two and a half seasons for West Virginia. That's unreal. That is unheard of. That is unheard of. And Neil Brown should have been held accountable for that. And nobody said anything about that. That's a red flag right there. Nobody said a goddamn word about that. I was the only one that said anything, even though I was his, like, I was his only fan type shit. <laughs> and yet, my dumbass is still supporting him. And, man. And Uncle Lou, you probably don't even, you're not even watching this, but, you know, if you somehow end up watching this video, I just want to say you were right. And I'll call up to your show if, I don't know what's going on with you, but if you, everything's okay and you're back on YouTube, I'll call up on your show and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you you were right because um, Neil Brown is not a good coach. And you said by the end of the season... We were going to be on the fire Neil Brown train. It didn't take the end of the season. It took two games. It took two games. Now, I will say you weren't right about our talent. You know, talently. I mean, talent, like, you can see the talent on our field. You know, you can see that we're a talented team. And Pitt's a talented team as well. I'll argue with you about that. Um, and I can even try to make... Well, I don't even think I can make that argument. I, I can almost make the argument that Dana was not a better coach than Neil, but I don't even know if I can make that argument anymore now either. You know, it's just, and I'm not saying, like, if you look at wins and losses, you know, it's just, it's just both me were mediocre. And, you know, Dana had more to work with, but at the same time, Dana showed us more, you know, he showed us a lot more, you know, he showed us that he wants to win, he wants to win football games, and he'll, you know, scream and yell and, and flip out because he shows that he's passionate, we don't have that with Neil, he's, you know, he doesn't care about winning and losing, it's, he's a Butch Jones, that's what Neil Brown is, Neil Brown is one of these life champions that, you know, we need to develop young men, and we don't care about talent. We just have to develop these boys and develop these men, these boys into men. That's what Neil Brown cares about. He doesn't care about winning football games. Now, Dana was the exact opposite. He didn't give a fuck if these kids were out doing whippets the night before and getting arrested for coke charges. Not saying that was the case. I'm just saying in general, he wouldn't give a fuck. 
we we need something in between that, you know? And the same thing goes for for our, you know, being aggressive and being conservative. Neil is way too conservative. Uh, Dana was way too aggressive. We need something in between that. If we could have somebody in between Dana and Neil, then we would have a good fit. But all I know is that both are just the two extremes. They're, they're you know, they're just two opposite coaches, but yet the same result happens. I mean, it's, it's, it's just, I'm just tired of feeling this way, you know? And I'm sure y'all wanted me to come on last night and rant and rave and, and yell and flip out, but I don't even have that in me anymore. I just don't. I mean, I'm used to it by now. I'm fucking used to it. I'm used to it. I just like, it doesn't surprise me. I, I like, you know what I feel like? It's like, it's like when, you know, you ever, you ever met like a girl that, you know, and like, let's say like in high school, like you met, you know, you were friends with this girl, whatever. You, maybe you had a little crush on her or something. And, but yet she would always date these guys, scumbags, and yet, you know, fall in love with them and then get heartbroken, you know, and, and just continue to do that and every single time come crying to you type shit, you know, and, and, you know, she's just like, at, at some point she's just like, it's okay, I'm used to it by now, you know, I'm used to it, it's like, she's upset and she feels disappointed, but yet she's used to it, and it's like, she almost feels like, upset at herself, you know, disappointed in herself for falling into that same trap, falling in with the, the same, you know, guys, the same type of guys, like, you know, that's almost how I feel about, like, West Virginia football, for example, you know, like, that's, it's like, I'm, I'm disappointed in myself for continuing to get my hopes up about this team just to result in bullshit, you know? That's just how I feel. And I don't even feel, like, mad or, or like, angry because I just feel used to it. You know, I'm used to it by now. It doesn't, doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me at all. And uh, it's just... <sighs> You can't lose to Kansas in year four when you have probably one of the best, most talented teams that you've ever had. Well, not in West Virginia football, but Neil Brown, the most talented team by far that he's had. It, it doesn't, you know, and JT Daniels is an absolute baller. He's a freak. He's a, you know, he, he's like a five-star athlete for a reason. I mean, he shows every little bit of that talent, and he will be a first-round draft pick this year. If he stays healthy, he will be a first-round draft pick. And and Bryce Ford Wheaton, you know, he had like 11 catches for like 150-something yards. I mean, and then Sam James, four receptions for 90 yards. We, You know, Keaton Prather got in on the action, 50 yards or something for him, I think. You know, we all – they all – like. We have the talent. We have the damn talent. But yet, and, and yet the same issues occurred, the same fundamentals, the false starts. I mean, missed, false starts on offense, you know, uh, missed tackles on, on defense, you know, penalties on both sides of the ball. It, that stuff didn't get cleaned up. And actually, you could argue, on defense, it got worse. I mean... That's coaching. That's a direct result of coaching because we were seeing that it's not a, a talent issue. It's not a, it's not a uh, performance issue or a, uh, a um, it's not an issue of, of if they're putting in the effort. No, it's, it's, ex it's, it's execution as in the, the, the tech, the the shit that should be fixed in practice, is not being fixed in practice. 
it's not being fixed in practice. It's just not. I mean, I don't know what they're doing in practice, but I don't know how you you watch that pit game and you don't come out and rag your players to death and and and, and fix those corrections. I mean, and and you have Kansas. I mean, Kansas isn't no slouch, but it's Kansas, you know. And you shouldn't come in thinking like that. But you know, it's an opportunity for you to be able to fix correct those mistakes and kind of be able to to get some confidence playing a a, a a quality enough opponent where you actually have to try and you actually have to play hard but at the same time you know you have some lead way or whatever and you're able to kind of you know should blow the team out and, and we started to you look first quarter it's like 14-0 you're thinking you know here we go we're gonna blow them out and then our defense just did not show up. And it's like, and, and another thing that's concerning is our, it's like our seniors didn't show up on defense. I mean, Dante Stills wasn't anywhere. Uh, Taj Austin had that terrible roughing the pass. You didn't hear him all game. And then he has a terrible roughing the passer penalty that, that had us at third down, third and long in overtime and would have set, made them settle for a field goal. And yet has that rough from the passer penalty and then we pushes the ball and get, they get a first down they score a touchdown that would have won this game right there <laughs> you know because then we would have been able to 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 score a touchdown or, or have a field goal and win the game but nope he had to give a rough in the passer penalty and it's just it was just it's just awful like they I don't know how – it's like the defense just completely gave up. Like, I, I didn't see any kind of emotion, any emotion at all, you know, and that's coaching. That's pure coaching. They had a letdown. The same exact thing happened when we played Oklahoma last week. We played Oklahoma and the same fucking bullshit happened – I mean, not last week. Last year, we played this Oklahoma, and the same fucking bullshit happened where we barely lost to them. We played a great game. Then we came out and shit the bed against Texas Tech in our own field. In our own field. It's a freaking pattern. And personally, I, I don't even know what to do. I don't even – should we get rid of him now? Like, should we get rid of him now or later? I mean, if we get rid of him now, like, let's say if we get rid of him now, then if Jimbo Fisher does get fired from Texas A&M, we can reel him in, you know. But if we get rid of him now, expect us to go. Literally, I know people have been saying we're going 1-11, but I mean literally going 1-11 if we get rid of them now because our program will completely fall apart you know and then it's just going to make the person that comes in his job even harder but then again at least he'll have time to recruit his guys in the first year and he'll be able to to get a full recruiting class in in his first year you know and who knows maybe he will be able to if we get a guy in you know maybe he'll be able to muster up some wins or if Graham Harrell is the interim coach for the rest of the season. Maybe he can get a few wins, you know. At least he'll, at least he'll be aggressive, you know. It's just an awful. It's just a nightmare, you know. It's just an absolute nightmare. I. Like, I don't get it, man. I, and it's like, I bleed blue and gold. I mean, I was born in Morgantown and I, you know, lived there since I was young. And then, you know, just, you know, my my parents both went there. And my mom worked at the hospital there. Like, I've always been, and I grew up when you know, I was a little kid. I remember, you know, watching West Virginia, you know, Take go on that incredible run in 2007, 2007 and watching us lose the pit. And I remember how awful I felt. And then, then we went out and went to the beat, uh, Fiesta Bowl. And I remember vividly winning that game and just the, the 
how I felt and it's just like that feeling was like once in a lifetime it's just like you know that that like I've basically been a fan for life and you know it just it pains me to see this program and see what what we've become you know and it's like if you really think about it and me as like you know kind of as an adult or even as a teenager I never got to see a good West Virginia football team you know I've never got to see like an actual you know playoff um caliber team or, or a team that even goes 11 wins besides the Orange Bowl um but I was 11 for that so I wasn't even a teenager so that doesn't even count yeah so ever since the Orange Bowl I've like I've never gotten to experience that that same feeling as as a teenager or as an adult so it's just you know it, it sucks it sucks to be a West Virginia fan it really does you know, if you're if you're new to college football and you're looking for a team, don't choose West Virginia. You know, it's just for your own benefit. Because if you choose West Virginia, then you're gonna end up not even liking college football. And I'm not saying I don't. I'm just saying, you know, if you're new to college football and that's the first experience you get for college football, yeah, you're you're gonna quit watching real fast. So, I don't know, it's just, <sighs> yeah, I, I got nothing else to say. I really don't, I mean, what, what else can I say? We shit the bed against fucking Kansas. I mean, and, and another thing, one more thing before I get out of here. Like, what irritates me the most is that we see all these teams like Marshall go out to Notre Dame and win. And they didn't play good, but they got the win. I mean, Appalachian State goes out and beats Texas A&M. They didn't play great, but they got the win. Tennessee, you know, Pitt gave them all they could handle, but they ended up victorious. And it was the same type of game West Virginia was in. But Tennessee got the win. I mean, and then, like, FSU beating LSU. You know, all eyes on them. They go out and, and they're not a great team. West Virginia is in a better spot. Well, talent wise and stability wise, we're in a better spot than they are. But yet they went out and got a win. You know? And and yet we we just can't do that. For whatever reason, it's like it, it's just like we're not a winning team. We're not a winning football program right now. Ever since Dana Horgerson, we've just gone downhill. And now Neil Brown took over, and the going downhill has been even more rapid. Like, and, and he, he put out that video talking about don't give up on this team. Neil, we haven't given up on this team. We've given up on you. We're giving up on you. That's it. That's all I got.